Hi, hello, 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 hello. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> I really don't have an intro yet, um, which is honestly fine by me because the only reason that I made an intro for my other channel is because I realized that it's like something that you're just supposed to do on YouTube. Um, if it were up to me, I would have never made an intro and I honestly felt kind of conformist to coming up with one and I feel like I just combined different elements of different people's intros to where it felt like I wasn't plagiarizing them but like it felt something it was something that I feel like was kind of like still natural to me so there's that I'm also trying out um holding the little lapel mic today because I noticed a lot of people do that in their videos um particularly Grace ASMR and I'm not sure if it's the proximity of the mic to their mouth that makes the mouth sounds better or if it's like a specific technique that they're doing and I know that you have to be careful like not to breathe on it um, and I don't really know how it's gonna sound so just trying things out <laughs> that's what I do um, but I will have to clip it to me later because my idea for today's video was just to basically collect different purple things that I have um, laying around my house obviously I own a lot of purple things like in my last video I said <laughs> several times I didn't realize I repeated myself but Purple is my favorite color. It's been my favorite color for years. I love it because I feel like, you know, pink, pink, sorry. <laughs> pink is a traditionally feminine color, feminine color. And blue is kind of like a boy's color. And I kind of like that, you know, purple doesn't really have any like a gendered connotations. You know what I mean? And I also just like enjoy it as a color. And also like purple was my favorite color growing up. Um, because it was my mom's favorite color so basically I just kind of copied her but like I genuinely do like the color I feel like people will kind of like maybe relate to this um, when you were a kid like copying certain things of your parents like the way that my mom wrote my name I thought was really pretty and wrote her name so I would like try to copy the way that she like wrote my name like okay this is how I'm gonna explain it you know how a normal a is like a triangle right um, well, my mom would write my name, like, the letter A in, like, a cursive style, so it would be, like, a loopy A, or I guess if I was doing it for you guys, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't know what it would be, but, so I guess, so yeah, she would write my name, like, a cursive, cursive A, and actually, <laughs> now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, um, this perfectly explains what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Um, this is a like novelty gift straw that Adam got me as a gift one year um, So I figured I could just show you guys like different purple objects and sort of uh, ramble about them make sounds with them if at all possible um, But like, yeah, <laughs> he got this for me for one of my birthdays one year and um, It was like a couple years ago when I still worked at uh, the convenience store and I actually did try to use this like as a straw like but basically the straw is like too small and too long for you to actually like be able to drink out of this well. Like I did think it was funny to just be sitting there like sipping on my drink out of a straw that clearly said my name. Um, and it is kind of funny. And it's kind of cool. But mostly nowadays I just put it on my bulletin board. Like it's just kind of decor because it's not really practical. Um, I hate to say it. And, and he doesn't mind. Like obviously this is, you know, sort of a novelty gift, but it's still kind of cool. You know what I mean? So I just kind of treat it, I guess as a sculpture. Um, maybe I could do some, some tracing of this. Hold on. So, A, R, I, E, and then L. So, I don't really know what my style is going to be yet. Like, am I going to repeat words? Am I going to, you know, like, what am I going to be what is my style of ASMR going to be? I think I have a lot of lip smacking. And I kind of like switching it up between like whispering and soft spoken. Um, just like transitioning. I don't know how to explain it. Just randomly whenever I feel like it. I feel like people have different styles and there's different things that I love different people for. Um, things that they do really well or ways that they pronounce a word that like no one else does. Um, that I always find really cool. You know, it's interesting today because Arizona is so sunny, but um, today it's pretty overcast. Like, I feel like the sun is just now coming out. So this doesn't make the greatest sounds, but... 
just wanted to show that to you guys. Yeah, so I just figured I could talk a bit about the significance of purple, like, to me personally. Um, which is why I titled my channel after it. And also just, like, talk a bit about, I guess, the channel name. Um, I tried to be on theme by wearing these new earrings that I just recently got. They're from a shop called Mini Kitty Designs on Etsy. <laughs> Because, like I said, I was browsing browsing Etsy the other day, and and I showed a little clip of I ordered two pairs of earrings, and the other pair is like this, um, like daisy shaped plastic earrings. They're like rainbow colored. Um, both of them are laser cut. This is laser cut wood that's painted purple. Um, and in case you can't tell, it says "Girl Power." But I love the way both of these pairs of earrings sound, although the rainbow ones are definitely cuter. And I will definitely wear those at some point and do like a little um, like earring tapping or playing with earrings video. Like I don't have many earrings anymore. Um, most of the dangling earrings that I love fell apart. And I feel like dangling earrings are the ones that look the best on me. I always get compliments on the dangle earrings that I wear. Never really like the studs, even though I like studs because they don't get caught on anything. Um, But yeah, this Etsy shop is really cool. I ordered two pairs to get like cheaper shipping, but or like free shipping, I'm not sure. But I really like the way these sound. I love a good um like I used to be really into statement earrings a few years ago. Like if you went far enough back on my book channel, you could probably find like I made these earrings. Um because I'm pretty sure I either took like a class in college where we made earrings or I was just like really into it for a while so I was making my own earrings and so I followed this tutorial on YouTube that had like these earrings were they had, like these massive purple pom-poms and then like a silver chain and then a hook and so they were really easy to make you basically just sewed the pom-pom um, onto the chain and then attached the chain to the hook and so yeah it was a really fun project I wore them um, if you scroll far enough back on my book videos you could probably find um, a video where I wore them, but they kind of like got rusty over the years because it was like cheap materials and I'm pretty sure I had to throw them away because the pom-poms got like musty or whatever and I could probably make another pair at some point like I just think fuzzy pom-poms are like so freaking cute and I love wearing earrings throughout the day when they make a slight noise um, like these and the other pair in particular sound really good So yeah, I decided to put on something purple for the video since I'm not wearing a purple shirt today. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do... Light some purple incense. Does anyone else like wood tapping? I know I said I don't watch male ASMR artists, but I was specifically searching for like wood tapping. Uh, one day or night or something like that and um, what's that guy called ephemeral rift had this video that was just wood tapping no talking heavenly <laughs> absolutely heavenly and this incense thing is a really long and B made of wood so I'm gonna light some incense with my uh, and I'm gonna not light my lapel mic on fire, but gotta be really careful. I took the safety off this, and I never knew before, uh, before working at the gas station that like, or like dating Adam, that how people got these to flick so easily was that they took the safety off. Um, I don't really know, you know, how I thought they were doing it, but you know how lighters are like kind of hard to flick. Well, take the safety off, and that problem is solved. Although obviously don't take the safety off if you have kids um, or anybody that you know shouldn't be playing with a lighter but for adult use in an adult household and I'm like afraid that this could be too loud okay so I'm gonna light it Uh, 
and I've been reading a bunch of books slash listening to a bunch of books by Thich Nhat Hanh, who's like a Buddhist monk, and um, he talks about watching incense or using incense as a form of meditation. I personally love everything about incense, except for the mess that it makes with all the like ashes or like burning debris, I don't know what to call it, but like after it disintegrates and it makes a huge ashy mess. So I'm gonna go set this. Actually, I'm gonna set it on my boyfriend's nightstand. He talks about like watching the smoke um, and how it's basically like a form of meditation. Um, and I think that's really cool. It's really neat. Actually, I just had an idea that I could be like holding this or holding this out and maybe the smoke will look cool if you can even see it. I don't know if you can see it, but maybe just moving it. Be relaxing. Because I do like watching the smoke. I think the smoke is beautiful. Um, but so anyways. I'm not like, I wouldn't consider myself like spiritual or even really Buddhist. I've always been really attracted to like Eastern philosophy, I feel like, and Eastern spirituality. Um, if I was going to believe anything in anything, it probably comes the closest. Um, but I was raised in a abusive, I need to start adding that in there because I've been saying I was raised in a Christian fundamentalist household, but that's not entirely the truth because on top of being fundamentalist, it was abusive. Um, like religion was used against me as a queer person. It was used as justification for, you know, child abuse. And I don't want to go super into it because I know, again, not a relaxing topic. So, um, but I'm just saying, um, and I also read that for trauma survivors, one of the biggest, most helpful forms of therapy is something called DBT. Um, I believe it's dialectical behavior therapy or something like that, but it's basically just a scientific sounding name for mindfulness and practices that are traditionally associated with Eastern religions. And so I found mindfulness, meditation, yoga, um, awareness, being aware of your body, um, coming back into your body, different things like that are really helpful to me. And so I've been reading a bunch of books about that. And I just think it's funny how they try to make it sound so like scientific when it's like a lot of these practices like inner child work have been around for like thousands of years and um, but now they're just calling it by these different names because it really works visualization really works your mind is so incredibly powerful, more powerful than you even realize. My mind was so powerful that it protected me for years. Um, from dealing with the full weight of what happened to me. And that was actually such a blessing. All the things that I thought were wrong with me that were malfunctions were actually my body, myself surviving, adjusting to the environment that I was raised in and recognizing now that those behaviors are maladaptive and working to change those and working on improving, it's hard. Um, but it's definitely rewarding to know there was never anything wrong with me. You know, I was just trying to heal, um, trying to stay alive. And that's what your body, that's what your mind does for you. So as I said, not religious, but, so the reason Lotus is in the title is because uh, lotus flowers, I believe, they grow on water, but they also grow from mud that's in the water. And, um... Ooh, I like the figure eight. I hope you guys can see at least a little of the smoke. So basically, lotus flowers are something that... beautiful, that grows from the mud, which is a beautiful symbolism for you know, surviving trauma and child abuse and, you know, bullying and sexual assault and all the things that I've been through, depression, anxiety. Um, not only is it be a beautiful metaphor for that, but um, I've just always like liked the lotus flower and the way that it, it appears. 
And I always thought, you know, back like years and years ago when I was considering what tattoo I would ever get, a lotus flower was one of the only things I ever wanted. I also wanted a Zelda related tattoo, so like potentially a Triforce, and I wouldn't really get any of these now. But this was like a radical thing for me to be considering at the time because as I said, <laughs> I grew up in a Christian fundamentalist home. It was like a big sin to like desecrate your temple because there's like a Bible verse about treating your body as if it's a temple. And so getting tattoos definitely not allowed. I was not allowed to paint my nails, you know, because that was body modification. A lot of Christians are notorious for hitting body modification. Um, Ears, ear piercing, that was another thing. I got my ears pierced at 18 years old um, because I wasn't allowed to when I was a kid. Just a single piercing, which is still all I have. Um, and I've kind of regretted it because I honestly don't wear earrings that often, but I'm trying to get back into it. I'm trying to get back into paying attention to like my physical body, I guess. I've never really enjoyed that, but So yeah, I was like, if I was ever going to get a tattoo, possibly a lotus flower, like a small one. Or, this was my other thing I wanted, was Childish Gambino lyrics, <laughs> which tells you around what time period I was considering considering this. And I don't think I really want a tattoo now, like I think I like the way I, that like clean, I hate to say it's clean, I have nothing against tattoos, like clean skin looks. And it's also just, I feel like I've always stuck to a kind of like modest look um what people would consider modest not for any great love of, of modest looks but just because um it's kind of a comfort thing like it's kind of the way i was raised you know i don't enjoy being sexualized even now i'm worried um with not i usually wear a bra whenever i'm filming or like put videos on camera just because i'm worried about creeps in my comments or like being sexualized but part of it is realizing that you know, you're not sexualizing yourself, other people are making that sexual. Um, and it's also like, why don't I deserve to be in my body the way I want to be in my body? And other people are like, you know, enjoying and sexualizing your body, but it's like, why can't you just like enjoy it for yourself? Like, I feel like I've never really been able to enjoy it for myself. I'm always, you know, worried. I'm always dressing to try to keep men from harassing me. I'm always dressing to, um, try to fit in or look normal or you know I don't, I don't know how to explain it you're always dressing for other people you're not really dressing for yourself um and enjoying your own beauty if that makes sense so i'm trying to start working on that again um being i guess more authentic which is incredibly difficult when you grew up um to survive trauma being raised by a narcissist you have that fawn response where you just agree with people to protect yourself or go along with things to protect yourself or avoid doing a lot of things that will make you stand out or that could cause conflict because you don't want people angry at you, yelling at you, you're afraid of that because you grew up with that. So anyway, I should probably stop with the incense, it's been a while. The next purple item, since we were already talking about things that kind of smell good, is just this Better Homes and Gardens candle. Just a simple candle from Walmart that's been in the bathroom. Lavender and Lemonade. Highly fragranced, highly fragranced, highly fragranced. Premium wax blend. Premium wax blend. Premium wax blend. It says lemon, sugar, pineapple, water, lavender, melon, and vanilla scent notes. And I don't usually buy candles this big, but when we were staying in a hotel before we got our apartment, because we just moved, I needed a candle. I guess I just thought it like smelled bad in the hotel or whatever, so I just grabbed this because I love both lavender and lemonade, so. This is a really big candle. I usually buy the smaller ones that are like half the size, probably about where this candle is like right now. Um, but what I don't understand is when you have these for a long time and you've lit them a bunch of times, it starts getting all like black around the rim. So whenever I go to light it, like my hand gets all black. Is there like a way to prevent that? I also can't really smell this candle anymore unless I get like right up on it. And I feel like it's because I'm just like so used to the smell, you know what I mean? 
Like I've smelled it so much I can't smell it anymore. That's why I feel like I have to peri periodically switch things up. Like not even just scents, but just in general things in my life. If I'm always eating the same foods, then like it starts to feel like I can't even taste them. Like sometimes I have to switch off what soda I'm drinking. Like I'm to the point where I can't really taste the melon diet Mountain Dew anymore. And sometimes I have to switch to like a cherry Coke or I feel like switching just makes it better because then it kind of shocks you back into an awareness if that makes sense and I'm definitely a creature of habit so it's hard for me to remember to switch things up okay the next purple item I've got ooh it's still wet <laughs> sorry <laughs> from when I rinsed it out but this is something called a Denman brush. I finally actually got one of these after seeing them on the internet for like, I don't know, the past year. They're specifically made to brush product through um, curly and I believe wavy hair so that it gets evenly distributed. And it's meant to be used when your hair is wet. Now I already use this is very old, this is like years old, but um, so I already use a wide tooth comb in the shower to brush my hair out. And it's like, you can tell because the paint is going and it's like crusty from being like, you know, that like hard water that collects on everything. It's a bit crusty from being in there. It's so old. But this like definitely works. Like I was nervous to pay like 20 bucks for a just for a hairbrush but it is definitely worth every penny if you have curly hair and it did used to say denman on it but it's already worn off and this is an official one and they had regular colors too but of course your girl got the purple but yeah someday i'll do a hair video i'm really sad that there's not more like curly hair play videos because I kind of googled it and I didn't really not that many came up so that's really sad um, so hopefully someday I'll make one I did try in my Edgar Allan Poe video to do a little bit of hair play because I like the way it sounds so hopefully one day I'll do a hair and earring play and maybe more stuff involving hair and show you guys probably more of my products and stuff like that. Kind of a nice scratchy sort of rough sound zipper. Okay, moving along to the next item. It's an amethyst. I actually have several. Um, kind of hard to get sounds out of unless you scratch it, but this small one is a gift that Adam gave me like right when we first started dating. So he collects like different rocks and stones and he gave me this one to keep because you know it's purple and because I love amethyst because it's purple and this one he brought back from a trip I don't remember where he went but this one's a lot heavier you can kind of use it as a paperweight although I usually keep it on my nightstand it goes with my um purple theme yeah but so I don't really believe that crystals really do anything I just like the way that these look and that's why I keep them although I do believe that amethyst symbolizes like sobriety and like clarity I believe and different things like that so that's cool as somebody who um used to struggle with alcohol but you know got clean of it like I will drink very very occasionally for like a recreational 
sort of thing like on a weekend I'll have a drink or two if I feel like it um but it's really pretty rare and when I had first met Adam I used to like literally start my days with a fifth um <laughs> so I've definitely my alcohol consumption has gone way down which is awesome um I found different things that help with you know my depression and anxiety better so that's great it's great knowing I won't get fatty liver disease and it's great knowing that I have control now and I don't crave drinking like I used to and ASMR I feel like is definitely one of the things that helps with that so those are the amethysts I'm drinking cold kind of burnt coffee out of my support black authors mug not purple but the whole cover of this kind of reminds me of reading rainbow if you guys ever read that or watch that <laughs> red reading rainbow if you ever watched reading rainbow lavar burton i loved that when i was a kid so yeah that's my little mug i'm trying to stop drinking coffee because i feel like it's staining my teeth but right now it's like the only caffeine we have left in the house i need to go grocery shopping so i can get me some more diet sodas and i already drank a giant matcha latte this morning So I didn't feel like having tea again, so Adam left the coffee pot on and I drank the rest of the uh, burnt coffee. Okay, more purple items. Yes, I do have purple hangers in my closet. Um, it's extremely difficult to make sounds with this, but I'll try. Feels like I bought these forever ago. I think also just from some cheap place like Walmart and all my hangers aren't even purple I really need to upgrade to some like better hangers but I'll use these until they fall apart because I don't want to kill the environment these are my um Mary Poppins bag basically a purple shopping bag and people I'll take these in the store with me and it's so much easier shopping with using these instead of the uh, like plastic bags that they give you you could fit so much more stuff in here and think about it you're not wasting all that plastic and people always like compliment me on these and like ask where I got them and I feel terrible because I was I ordered these when I was getting like super into recycling and sustainability and like zero waste and trying to improve on that but i didn't understand that like ordering from amazon is not sustainable so i got these from amazon and it's actually more wasteful to throw things away or get rid of things instead of using them until they're used up um and then getting something actually sustainable so i feel bad when people ask me where these are from because like i don't want to say amazon because like i don't want to support amazon but yeah, they're from Amazon and I'm just going to use them until, you know, they fall apart. And then I'll look into actual sustainable options. I feel like I see bags like this all the time in the thrift store. So maybe that could be an option. And speaking of not liking Amazon, I've got my, I've got my journal here. And I've got this nice sticker. That's the Prime logo, except it says Crime. Which a friend of mine made me aware of. Got a burning American flag. It's for a brand called America Hates Us. Got an ACLU sticker. I think it's supposed to be a bumper sticker, but I got it in the mail and stuck it on here. Because I was chosen to take like one of those ACLU like quiz things. Like They asked me if I thought that Trump was taking enough actions against COVID and stuff like that and of course I said very concerned very concerned very concerned for every single one um on the front we've got an official Black Lives Matter sticker this one was off Etsy it's just like a pyro like a sort of a magic fire thing I don't know why I just liked the, the design of it um we've got a style in this 
a sticker in the style of Hot Wheels, except it's Hot Girls, which I thought was cute. We've got a literal F-bomb, which I am prone to using. We've got an Esmeralda sticker, because she was like my hero, my idol when I was a kid. I had Esmeralda sheets, as well as Pocahontas sheets. Hunchback of Notre Dame is like the best Disney movie, and it is so underrated. Like, I literally like have that movie memorized, and I love it. Probably my favorite childhood movie. I've seen it like hundreds of times. I've got a lightning bolt because when I ordered my set of Oracle cards, um, the store that I ordered them from had like this is their logo, and I liked it because I like things with lightning bolts. I like lightning bolts in general, so I did end up using it. And then we've got this Chadwick Boseman Black Panther sticker my lovely friend Lydia sent me. Um, she sent this to me after he passed away last year and it was like a really sweet gesture because I was pretty upset about it. Like it's probably one of the first celebrity deaths I've ever been upset about um, just because Black Panther meant so much. I went to go see it in theaters at like the fancy theater. I think it's like Alamo Draft House. I don't know if they have that here. I wonder. It's like a theater where you could order alcohol and like food that goes with the movie, the theme of the movie. And I don't think we ordered any food because like it was already expensive. And also I just like sneak food into the movie theater if I want to eat. But yeah, we went to go see it in theaters, which I very rarely do. And that was just great. So yeah, we'll do a little bit of page flipping. This is my journal. I believe I got this at Office Depot. And in the front, I can't sh really show you guys because my name's in here, but I have cutouts of notes that Octavia Butler wrote herself. It was just her birthday the other day, so I love her. Famous Afrofuturist writer who should be more famous because there are so few black women and women of color in science fiction. And she deserves to be just as famous as Isaac Asimov or, you know, anyone else like that. But she's not. Why? Because racism, you guys. Racism. If you've never read anything by her, you definitely should check it out. Okay, I'm thirsty, so the next thing is gonna be this Tupperware cup. It's a vintage Tupperware, which I'm like super obsessed with. I did go through a phase of buying like all the old colorful Tupperware. This is really only one of the only survivors. Um, a lot of it didn't end up being very practical, but I love the way that it looks and how colorful it is. I don't know if this was meant to be a cup. It has like a flat lid that goes on it, but it doesn't stay very well. So yeah, I just use it as a giant cup. This is kind of the cup that I have on my nightstand and I um, drink out of it, you know, when I'm going to bed. It's kind of a water cup. Okay, the next thing is this purple. Oh, got a little water on there. PS4 controller. Purple PlayStation controller. Um, I bought myself a PlayStation 4 last year for my birthday. I hadn't had a game system in literal years. Not since I had to sell my GameCube. And I decided to buy a PS4 because I really like playing Skyrim. And honestly, I haven't even played it that much since I bought it, but I do love playing Skyrim and I would love to do a video. Um, I don't know how to do this, but somehow recording Skyrim footage while like also doing ASMR over it and like gameplay because I think that could be really relaxing and I just really love that game like to me it's gorgeous and the music is great and I love the exploration and all the different options that you have. It really feels like a grown-up Legend of Zelda and I loved the Legend of Zelda when I was growing up like as such a special place in my heart. Hot elf boys, am I right? 
Like, Link could literally get it. Like, straight up. Twilight Princess Link. Why do they make him so hot? <laughs> But yeah, so I went out of my way, went to Vintage Dock, which is probably another thing that they don't have here. But I went to Vintage Dock to specifically buy one of these, and they didn't have it, so they ordered it for me. And shipped it to my house, and it was an inordinate price, but you know what? Worth it. Purple Gaming. And you guys want to know what's so embarrassing? The first game that I bought for my PS4, I was really excited about it because I saw the trailer. And I love Norman Reedus. Like, I loved him in The Walking Dead. So it was that, um... Shit, I forgot the name of the game now. But it's like this... You're basically a delivery boy. And you're, like, delivering packages in this, like, apocalyptic wasteland. And, oh my gosh, I hated that game so much. Death Stranding, that's what it was. <laughs> the trailer looked so good, but the actual gameplay was, like, so boring. And I was so bad at it. Like, I just... He just kept falling over and I like could not get the hang of it. I was like, oh my god, maybe I'm just too old for video games. Um, but I think in actuality it just wasn't the right game for me. And I ended up selling it back to the game store at a loss. And I felt bad because I bought the PlayStation myself, but then my boyfriend like bought that game for me as like a birthday present, like my first game. I should play this more to make it worth it because I feel bad that I spent so much money on it and I barely use it. I just kind of feel like maybe I'm too old for gaming. <laughs> it just feels like kind of a waste of time as an adult, you know what I mean? Because you know there's always something else that you're supposed to be doing or that you could be doing. Or maybe that's just me. And I also can't just sit there and game for like an hour and then get off of it. I feel like you need a big chunk of time to like, because the longer I play the more I get into it, you know what I mean? Okay, the next thing is this glitter purple heart that I kind of use um, just for storage. I used to have another one, but I think it broke. Not sure. I also used to have like glass purple hearts that I would keep like little trinkets and stuff in. But yeah, I believe the whatever the purple was on them like wore off, so I don't have those anymore. I wish I did because they were cool, but. And I just keep all kinds of different stuff in here. I just kind of shoved a bunch of stuff in here when I was moving. So there's glasses that I used for a cosplay. Um, purple iridescent swatch watch that kind of got scratched, which is why I quit wearing it. But I think there's a way to polish it down. It's so like I need to figure out how to do that. Different uh, lip balms. These are the um, baby lips. And then I was really into wearing colored liquid lipsticks for a while. So it was like a couple years ago. Um, so I have a couple different colors. I felt bad just getting rid of them, even though that was definitely a phase that I went through. So I've got... Um, so I've got Vigorous Violet. It's probably the one I wore the most. Love a good purple lipstick. Premier Plum. It's this one and then this one was like it's brilliant Bordeaux but it's kind of a like deep red like classic I look really good in like purpley lipsticks but this one also I think looked good when I was kind of in a pinup mood because I had like long hair but then like sort of curly bangs like I was really inspired by SZA at the time so I like cut the front of my own hair which I really regretted later and I was really sad when I found out Sizz's hair isn't real. Because, like, I thought it was real this whole time, but apparently it's, like, a fancy wig. Because, like, her hair is, like, the only rep of hair that looks like mine that I've, like, ever seen. Um, and I also, I don't know if you guys have seen the, um, there's, like, this girl that recreated Sizz's photo shoot for her, um, like, high school, you know, those senior, senior photos, that's what they're called. For her senior photo and that was incredible i was like oh man i wish i could do that because i love the aesthetic of that album cover like that has to be one of the best album covers ever you know what i mean i've got some earring backs that adam bought me because i'm forever losing 
earring backs. And then basically all of my old earrings and jewelry that has survived. See, I told you guys I like lightning bolts. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. I've got a Burt's Bees hemp that I'm pretty sure Adam got as a present and he doesn't wear lip balm really. Doesn't need it. It has such a weird taste to it, but I kind of like it. Although I kind of stopped using chapsticks this small um, because I have like big ass lips. So I have like a giant tube of chapstick that people always make fun of me for because it looks like a glue stick. So the joke would be that I'm gluing my lips, you know, because <laughs> it's literally huge. I wish I had it so I could show you guys, but really the only other interesting things in here are giant bobby pin. And then, oh, looks like it got a spot on it, but I got this when I worked at the gas station. It's a 1924 Liberty. Um, I don't know if it's silver. I think it is a silver dollar. But it's got a lady on it, which is why I saved it. It was sort of lucky. It looks like it's gotten rusty in here. And this is a cute necklace my friend gave me that has a miniature book of the little prince on there. And maybe I will read The Little Prince to you guys sometime because, well, once I find a copy of it, because the book is so cute. Like, even though it's a kid's book, it's secretly deep. And do you guys want to know what else I've got in here? A tiny, tiny, tiny golden Bugs Bunny. Um, it's real, real gold. Can't remember what carrot it is. Carrot, haha, because it's Bugs Bunny. But... <laughs> I loved the Looney Tunes when I was a kid, and I loved Bugs Bunny specifically, because he's such a troll. And, um, so the gold chain for this broke, but I would love to get another gold chain so that I could wear my little Bugs Bunny. Such a trickster. I've also got a bunch of, um, purple travel toiletries. This one specifically is a thing of pills that I keep in whatever bag I'm carrying. Um, because like, you don't you never know when you're gonna need medicine and it seems like you never have it when you need it. So I keep any medicine I might need in here. And then when you're out of medicine, you have to pay like $5 for one or two doses of it at the gas station would suck, which sucks. So I try to stay prepared by keeping this stocked. So there's, ooh, looks like one of the pills opened, but there was cold medicine in here, a fiber pill, um, several off-brand Midol, Benadryl, allergy medicine, because I do sometimes need that. I don't know if I'll need it out here, but there's not really a whole lot of flowering plants. It's mostly just like cactuses and stuff like that. So I also usually keep a caffeine pill. So yeah, just different stuff that I might need that is super frustrating to, you know, start having allergies and your nose running and you're stuck at work for eight hours a day and there's nothing you can do about it. I think this one has hair gel in it. I've got a bunch of these purple. I think this one is coconut oil, um, but it's melted in there because it's so hot here. So yeah, get my sticky. <laughs> this one I think was conditioner. I think this one is body lotion. Cause you know, can't be without my lotion. I don't want to be ashy. I'm not the biggest fan of water sounds. This is just a spray bottle of water. For wetting my hair. I usually just wet it in the sink, but okay. <laughs> that is so frustrating. It definitely just cut off in the middle of my recording. And so like I lost a bunch of triggers, but you know what? I've probably done enough. Like I've done a lot of purple stuff and I feel like, you know, 
that's probably a good place to end it. So I'm kind of sad, you know. <laughs> you guys won't see this lovely container of raisins I got out. And I also revisited the foam block. So it sucks that you won't see that, but that's probably enough purple stuff uh, for now. And maybe I can make a part two at some point. Um, but it seems like a good place to end. Since my camera decided to be a little bitch. It's not even really a camera, it's... At one of my boyfriend's old jobs, they basically gave him a phone. Like it was just something that came with part of the job. And then when he left that job, like, they never asked for it back, but they turned the service off. So now it's just like a phone that can't really be used for anything other than recording video, which is what I use it for. But all the time it's constantly like trying to connect to the network. It's trying to like get in contact with the cell station and like it can't um, because the service shut off, it's been shut off for years. So it'll like do this annoying thing where it like tries to software update or gives you different notifications while you're in the middle of filming, but it won't make a noise or like tell you. So I have to get up and check that it's still recording all the time. And my other camera, my real camera is messed up right now, so that's the reason why I've been using a phone. But it also kind of sucks. But we make the best of a bad situation. It's also annoying because there's like a lag. Um, on the audio, so I'm supposed to clap at the beginning of every video so that I can line up the audio, like in the editing software. I forgot to do it, so the lining up is gonna be a pain in the ass. So there's like a lot of steps that I have to go through in order to get this video working. But I like the low pressureness of this other channel because I feel like I can say, you know, whatever I want do whatever I want. It's kind of low, low pressure. I don't have to stay always on topic. It just doesn't feel like as much work as a book channel. And I'm really sad I'll eventually have to unwrap this because it sounds so good. Like I feel like the foam tapping sounds almost like rain. So anyways, hope y'all enjoyed seeing some purple objects from around my house. Um, learning about the origins of my channel name, sort of the meaning behind it, which the meaning behind it is probably obvious, but, you know. I hope you are relaxed or chill or asleep. I was also doing some kissing noises, which now you won't get. I hope you have a lovely whatever time of day it is where you are. And I'm looking forward to making more videos on this channel. You guys have been, you were so kind to me on my first video and I really had like a lot of fun making it and putting it together. So I feel pretty excited and pretty motivated. to work on it because it's kind of what I feel like I should be doing right now. So, all right, with that being said, good night.